Um, Hello, Paul. Dan. Sorry, I'm a bit late here. You're not late. You're five minutes early. Good. <laughs> um, tell me, uh, let's see, I got a few, three on board. Dan, Eliz Dan and Elizabeth. Oh, and uh, Katharia is join and wait for a second for Katharia. Okay. Uh, Three students are with us. Uh, please tell me you got the starter file for week number two by email. I got it. Dan. Good. Damien's coming aboard. We'll get into some 3D work today. And um, after a couple of little uh, Legos or stacking blocks exercises, uh, we'll get into extruding. Um, you know, start with some little plate-looking objects with, you know, cut edges and uh, holes cut in them. Sally is joining us, and. Um, We'll do a couple of the exercises in the handouts, and um, hopefully, time permitting, I'll assign two or three uh, homework assignments. So uh, we'll expect you to do the complete two-dimensional view for the homework problems. And uh, other than that, it'll be simple extrusion like we do in class. So Damien, uh, Mike's turned off. You got the starter file. I forget, I send it out to the students a couple of times because I got bad addresses and was kind of in a rush. Yeah, I got it. Okay, Dan's got it. Sally's got it, I'm sure. And so far, um, is there anybody that um, turned in uh, the week number number one assignment but didn't get a confirmation letter from me saying, hey, looks good, carry on, see you Tuesday? iPhone guest. Okay, I forget who iPhone guest is. And um, last week there was somebody that that appeared on the on, on the list here as Lex. Excuse me if you get offended by calling you a gentleman, but I've been called much worse. Uh, Mr. iPhone, I think your cell your mic's on. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. It happens. Uh, who's who's Mr. iPhone? This is uh, Alex Brown. I'm probably going to get you on the other one, too. So okay. just look out for uh, well, that, the other that's one. That's fine. I, last week, I think I had a, uh, somebody that came on registered as Lex, and I thought that was you, Alex. Are you, you on by two devices, iPhone as well as Lex? I haven't seen you come in as Lex today yet. Uh, it, it's coming. It's um This oh. one... Usually is a uh, Lex, but yeah, um, I don't know. It just it's just easier for me. I have two computers, so. But right. uh, so yeah. That's it fine. I got another student uh, calls in on a cell for the audio and watches the video on a second computer. So uh, just just so I can keep track of attendance and all. Got Damien, Dan, Elizabeth, Alexander, Katharia. Sally Ali is coming aboard. Admit Ali. Okay, again, I'm hoping everybody um, has the uh, week two starter 
file uh, ready to open, if not open already. We'll get to that in an hour, I, I, I guess. We'll also need the handouts. Let me open up uh, the handouts here. Y'all can see my screen, right, with my uh, eBay and all this other junk on, on here. Uh, come on, Bergner. There we go. Uh, da, 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 classes. Class work. Uh, Kurt is coming aboard. Hey, Kurt. Open up uh, week number two here in the Google Classroom. And uh, now I've, the only way I've been able to download a DWG file from the classroom, looks like I carelessly shut it off here. But the only way I've been able to download a DWG is to install a, uh, temporary trial use of viewer and that caused a few hiccups elsewhere and uh, some of you i believe are are using uh, shipyard laptop computers and i uh, suspect installing softwares you know pretty risky with the firewall and antivirus checking uh, punchline is i have not found a way to to share DWG files with you, such as the starter files, except by emailing them to you. So um, let me know if any of you come across a way to get the DWG files off the Google Classroom assignment or the, uh, what's it called, the Google uh, Google Google Drive folder. You put the starter uh, WK2 starter version three uh, in two places in the uh, one of the many files within the assignment. And uh, as I did last uh, quarter for introductory, I put it in the what was it called uh, class drive. And either one of them, you've got to double click, and if if, it, if you can't look at it on the on the screen, like a preview, then you can't download the DWG. So let me know if you find a workaround. Meanwhile, I'll keep um, passing out the um, um, DWG files by email. Let's see if I can get back to the to the classroom. All right. Uh, let's see. There's the syllabus. I added a paragraph for the uh, rental software. I don't think anybody is. Uh, I heard one student took advantage of the rental software. Oh come on! Yeah, it looks like I gotta dig up some viewing software to, to view a .doc file. There we go. I believe I added this rental paragraph here. Anna is coming online. And I heard one woman uh, uh, paid the, uh, the fee to rent for a year for introductory. But since then, I, have no, I haven't heard of anyone investing the 350 or whatever it costs per year. There's a little clause in this rental uh, fully licensed AutoCAD that uh, if you're not perfectly satisfied, you can get your money back, but it's kind of questionably ethical. And, you know, if you, if you use it for the nine week class and then say, ah, I'm not satisfied, give me my money back. It'll let your conscience be your guide. And what else we got here in the classroom? Uh, 
Hey, hey, Paul, this is Ali. Yes, sir, Ali. Hey, so I, I still don't have access to uh, the class and classroom. For some reason, when I try to join, uh, it says wrong class or class not found or something. I don't know if anyone else is having this issue or just me. Um, let me work offline with you, Ali. I, I tried to put it in the same school, if you will, as the introductory class. Mm -hmm. And that didn't work because we're no longer using the uh, new, new school email addresses. Oh, okay. So I had to start from scratch using my Gmail uh, email ID. So uh, let me work offline with you. Do you, you. You did get all the handouts. Um, yep, I got them uh, through email. Good. Uh, have those files ready or, or, or open. Yep. It's, um, pages 2-1 through 2 dash was it four you know i'll i'll uh, reduce the size of these four pages and we'll work on them in class so have uh you know have those that pdf file available and as time permits take a look at these uh was it five assignments here and uh, depending on how much we can do in class, I'll assign two or three uh, for you to do alone in homework. So I'm tempted to do the uh, easiest one and the hardest one. Nobody has any preferences. Uh, let's see, what else we got open here? Okay, looks, why in the world do I have two? Okay, it looks like I got the syllabus uploaded as a DOC and, and again as a uh, office, uh, what's it called, Off, open office document. Uh, also, we've got the, uh, why is recording three? There's some junk on here that make, makes me think it's left over from introductory class. I don't know why Recordings 3 JPG is on here. I think I uh, built a handout to how to get to the recordings for introductory. Furthermore, uh, I've given up on the free NanoCAD. Anyway, let's um, get back. I'll uh, minimize if I can. Or, uh, reduce the size of the handout. Okay, I got a guest. Uh... Yeah, that's me, Alex, trying to get in on the other one for a bigger screen. Okay, uh, it's, it's coming in as a Q U N I Q U E. Quinique. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. Yes, All right. I won't write that name down as, as a new student then. Not a problem. Let's see, get uh, this exercise. Again, everybody's turned in. That, that's going to turn in the, the uh, homework from week number one. And uh, everybody that turned it in should have already gotten an uh, email reply back from me simply saying, looks good, have a nice day, see you Tuesday. I didn't see any of them that were so sloppy. I says, uh-uh, keep working and let me know. So was there anybody that submitted the uh, week one exercise but did not receive an email from me? Okay, so far so good. In a week or two, I'll I'll email you what I got for attendance and let you make corrections. If I, you know, because some, you know, I understand some students arrive late and some students arrive or leave early and watch the the recording to make up. By the way, the recording I have been putting in the classroom assignment. 
And I've also been putting on um, YouTube. So, um, you know, if you're, uh, uh, Alex uh, has trouble getting into the classroom, then uh, just make sure you, you get the YouTube link from me shortly after class. And I'm, I'm told it's really got to go out within hours, hours after the class for the next shift to come in and, and watch it. Um, anyway, any question on anything for uh, we've covered in class so far or what we're going to do tonight or any question before we get underway with new material? Uh, I do, Paul. I have uh, started uh, lesson two, um, like the 3D and everything. And right when it gets down to the bottom of like the first part of lesson two, where you have like the snake, um, did you like, uh, when you rotate it, is it at like a 45 degree angle since you have um, your Bergener ways with like the 45 degrees and things of that nature? Right there, like, yeah, where it says use the old rotate command. And you see how you have like the, um, the prisms is it going at a 45 degree angle or is it just like you just kind of made it at your own little angle? I, uh, short answer is I can't remember. <laughs> They're at the 45, it's probably because I got polar tracking set for 45 and it just snapped by convenience. Um, you know, since it doesn't specify, then 35, 90, 60, you know, you, you take um, whatever angle is acceptable. I, I, any angle is is good okay and don't feel you gotta duplicate my handout i just wanted you to exercise the the rotate command that we had in introductory class before we learn how to rotate in in, uh, in three dimensions about a specific three-dimensional axis okay i forget when that's coming up probably next week we'll uh, learn to 3D rotate or rotate 3D. I believe there's both commands, slightly different procedure. All right, well, let's get underway with uh, the PDF page 2-1. Um, there's two commands. Oh, I um, almost forgot. Up to this point, we've been using the, uh, what's it called, workspace drafting an annotation. I don't remember if, uh, if I touched on this in introductory, but down on your command or on your status bar, there's an icon that looks like a little, what is it, eight tooth gear with a downward pointing triangle next to it. And that'll allow you to change your um, graphic user interface for different types of of CAD work. Uh, drafting an annotation is what I recommend for simple two-dimensional drafting. Um, we might get by with 3D basics today, but I've been teaching uh, in the, the bigger, more complicated one, 3D modeling. So click on 3D modeling. You might have a shortcut up here at the top of your screen. Looks like I had mine on, but I turned it off. So some of your AutoCADs might have a drop down here at the top of the screen that lists these um, workspaces as well. So either from the top of your screen or from the little gear on your status bar, toggle over to the 3D modeling workspace. It's got a bit more than we'll learn, but it's certainly got everything we're going to learn on it. Close, uh, what's this drawing recovery here? Okay, again, we're on uh, change our workspace from drafting an annotation, which we used all quarter for introductory, to 3D modeling. And again, it's a little bit busier than 3D basics. But one of these days I might do the exercises on 3D basics and see if, if that might be better. Anyway, there's two ways that we can make these boxes. 
All you need is this little one by one by one cube box and this one by two by three box. And we can uh, snap them together using Bergner's five favorite running object snaps again. Make sure, as always, just your running object snaps button is turned on and your uh, polar tracking button is on and set for 45 degrees, I prefer. But with uh, O snap running and Bergner's five favorite endpoint, midpoint, center, quadrant, intersection, um, I think you'll you'll find stacking these boxes, even or stacking the cylinders, are very easy. Uh, it's rare that you know, might need a perpendicular O snap override, but don't recall needing it for anything today. Anyway. We can certainly use the um, perimetives here on the far left of the ribbon on the modeling panel. This flyout is, these are called primitives. Um, not sure if the mathematician Boolean or Bool, I think his name, if he invented that, but uh, he came up with the um, Boolean operations we'll play with later. The union command, this two kind of full moons crashing together, weld solids into a single piece. And which one, the center one subtracts um, one solid from another. And I, I recommend we use that to make holes into, into solid objects by subtracting from the large object the cylinder that overlays on it and it vaporizes the big you know where it where it interferes or where it overlays and it vaporizes the big object leaving a hole instead of a cylinder but these are booleans and anyway I'm starting to babble we can use the box command I'll, I'll demonstrate that uh, once and maybe the rectangle command and extrude it there's a second way. I don't see, doesn't look like we're, the word extrude comes on until page two. So uh, maybe we'll wait to page two and extrude these uh, polygons, triangle, pentagon, and hexagon. But either the box command or the extrude command with a rectangle can make, anyway. Let's click on box, pick a spot anywhere. There's a shortcut here. You can specify. Okay, we got another, okay, I believe that's uh, Alex coming back in. Um, for the cube, you can use a shortcut and just specify the cube option of the box command and save yourself a little bit of typing. Uh, command prompt says specify the length of the box command. Now, be, now you'll find out if your cursor is in an odd angle, then your cube will appear in an odd angle. For this exercise, let's be careful to have our uh, cursor in the zero degree direction, straight out the X axis. So with your cursor resting on the X axis or in the X direction, straight to the right, answer the question box specifically specify length of one and hit enter. Repeat that again for good measure. Box, click anywhere, hold your, or click Q, uh, invoke the cube option by C enter, right click and select it or click it on the command prompt with your cursor gently placed in the uh, straight right direction, type one enter. Now eventually we'll play with this, um, this is called the 3D cube viewing method. I'm still not really fluid with it, but you know, the nice thing about it is you can click on um, any of these sides of the cube and you know, click on the top and you instantly appear straight down. Uh, click on a corner. Notice there's uh, you can rest your cursor and you can put.
put a little blue square at any one of the corners, and that'll shoot you instantly to an isometric view. You know, the problem with a perfect isometric view is these cubes look like, you know, like hexagon shaped teepees looking straight down. So it's, uh, you know, you always wonder, well, is this point? Anyway, it's a little kind of an optical illusion. I like to tweak it a little bit. You can drag the, the, uh, the cube gently by clicking and dragging and get you slightly off of that you know, six-legged spider view. And, you know, all the views look the same here for front, right, back, and, uh, top. Whoops. Let's... All right, can I spin it around? Having trouble spinning it around, but a quick way to get back is to click on this house looking icon. That'll get you back to home, which is where we started from. Then you can click the top and uh, see your cubes. Another viewing tool that I recommend is this. And by the way, does everybody have the cube in this little, uh, I don't know if you call it, I guess, toolbar here? Once in a while, these things disappear, I'm not sure why. And I forget, I there's a real long, y'all got those two viewing methods? Mm -hmm. I suspect I'm gonna lose one sooner or later, and there's a type in like uh, view cube display entered, Y for yes entered, something cryptic like that. But, We'll uh, see how far we can go before I got to figure it out, that, that long type in. Anyway, um, I like this 3D viewing icon right here. Notice there's a little black triangle on the icon that invites you to click it and drop down. Okay, it's interesting. I expected an icon to come. Anyway, um, I recommend the, the free orbit. Um, Submenu of the um, of the orbit flyout, if you will. It's very similar to just the regular orbit, but the free orbit brings up this. I like to think of it as a gerbil ball. Imagine a, imagine your boxes are inside of a gerbil ball, and the gerbil ball is floating in water. So you can click and drag and rotate this gerbil ball. So you can see the contents inside the gerbil ball from any angle. And if you, if you click and drag from one of these circles at the quadrant, it's as if the gerbil ball is pinned at the, the um, two adjacent quadrants. So here I can roll the gerbil ball as if it's pinned about a horizontal axis. If I start my click and drag at the uh, circles at the top or, top or bottom of this gerbil ball. Be aware there's little use for it, but there's also this continuous orbit. You might impress your client if you, you just click and drag and release, and it'll kind of tumble that gerbil ball around, and you know, impress your client and have a high ooh-ah factor during an open house at your architect firm or, or uh, you know, machine design firm. Hit anything, I think enter, escape, anything to get back where we were. I'm still in the, uh, orbit icon, I'll hit escape to get back, hit the home icon, hit top, now we're back where we were. Let's go ahead and make the second box. I'll use the box command and maybe rectangle later if I think of it. I'm gonna pick a point at random, specify uh, rather than the other corner, let's go to length. And then uh, by default, the word length means the distance in the x direction. 
width means the distance in the y direction, and the third uh, dimension it'll ask for you is height, and obviously the z direction. So I'll say, hey, I want to specify the length. Following the handout, we'll say the length is simply one enter, width is two enter, and the height is the greatest number three enter. Now rats, I violated my rule about keeping my cursor on the uh, x-axis, always something, ain't it? So I'm gonna undo that, start over again, box, click, length, being careful to rest my cursor in the x direction, one, ent one enter, two, enter, three, enter. I'll delete this uh, second box I made just to stay with the handout. And now using free orbit again, I can uh, get it approximately to match the handout. Hit escape to stop, I'll move, and to further match the handout, I'll slide them a bit closer together. Now, how do you know uh, if this is the corner sh closest to you, or this is the corner closest to you? You know, with your imagination in this 2D or 3D wireframe, visual, uh, what's it called, visual mode, I think, visual style. You know, with the simple economy visual styles, I don't know which of these two corners is closest to my face. So let's spray paint this thing so we can see, you know, is this, is this a surface uh, that's visible or is this rectangular surface here uh, out of view. This is a little, yeah, we're jumping here to visual style. Hope I'm following everything. Uh, uh, used to be you could type in, I think it was shade mode. I was trying to remember last week, dogs barking. But, um, even inside of a, a, a viewport, which we'll get into in a few weeks, you can you can see these little drop down lists here. You know, click on the view style, and uh, what the heck, conceptual is probably the, a good one to start with. Whatever your color is of the current, you know, the, the color of the layer. Let me shut the door real quick. Whatever the uh, current color is, is what the conceptual visual, what's it called again, style, is going to spray paint. Uh, where's the layers? You can come here and change the color of the zero layer to anything else. And that'll affect the uh, spray painting of the conceptual visual style. Going back to free orbit again. You can rotate the gerbil ball wheel around a bit. It's Dan, I have a question. Yes, sir. You have the USC in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. How can I make that appear on my screen? Okay, give me a second here. I think when I moved the box, I accidentally moved it in the Y direction. Bear with me. Let me get it back down on the uh, XY plane again. And then I'll be careful to nudge it while it's still on the XY plane. You know, polar tracking is telling me it's going in the 180 degrees direction on the XY plane. So now I believe both, yep, both are, both are on the XY plane. 
to answer your question, um, interesting that, okay, you've got that mechanical, which has an unusual template file. Uh, type the word UCS icon. And there's a, you know, a list of options come up. UCS ICON enter. Yes, got that. It's already on, so you're, it's visible, but it's not stuck in the corner. Yes, it's like my zero coordinates is on the corner of one of my cubes. Okay, sometimes you want that, but to, to match mine, click on the no origin. Oh, okay. That'll, that'll pop it down to the, it'll remain in the lower left. You still know the directions, X, Y, Z directions, but it's a little bit harder to find your zero, zero, zero point. Yeah, it's, this and, is, um, you know, you can just pop it around and throw it wherever, okay. Yeah, you can even turn it off if it's distracting. I don't know that uh, there's a reason to do, you know, what the advantage of having it off if, if you're not using that part of the screen. In a few weeks, we'll, we'll place the UCS icon on the, on the sides of these things. So we can treat these like a, like a building and put windows and doors on one side and, you know, like, you know, uh, make a little porch, gable roof porch, and extrude it straight out from the side or from the back side. So we'll, uh, we'll address the UCS icon when we change the user coordinate systems in a few weeks. Anyway, um, now that we got the two um, basic boxes, let's just Play Legos, launch the copy command, and stack them together. What happened? Did I click the union command instead of the copy command? There it is. Copy. Okay, same copy as we used in the introductory. I'll select the copy. I'll grab it by a... Uh, um endpoint and didn't plan very good not a problem i'll just oh snap it to endpoints and assemble to the left rats a change from the last time I taught this class was I welded six of these little cubes in the, into, the, into a, a copy of the big box. Unfortunately, you can't just simply take the big box and you don't know how to tumble it over on its side yet. I don't know what I was thinking, but that's okay. Let's, uh, with this row of one, uh, one row of blocks, and we'll double check just to make sure that they're all in, you know, the way we think, we, we, the way we think the, uh, they are. You know, it's, it's kind of a good idea to periodically nudge your gerbil wheel, because uh, you could be doing a lot of modeling without realizing that one of your pieces is is pushed back in the into the screen, you know, 50 feet, because it all looks the same in, until you tweak it a bit to, to see that yep, they are where I think they are. It escaped to get out of the 3D free orbit. We'll launch the copy icon again and start stacking these guys. I think there's four rows, two and four high. Double check, remember I, I almost oh snapped and put it on a midpoint. 
Okay, I think I uh, accidentally copied too many times. Let me erase this row I over copied. Hey, Paul, it's, um, this is all over Twitter right now because my internet is detected. I can't really hear anything as huge. Your audio's so kind of garbled up, so uh, Alex. Say that again. Yeah, my my head is messed up. I still can't understand. You're saying your audio is messed up. Your kind of sounds robotic from my end here. Yeah, your name messed up. I don't know whether, um, did you dial in on a telephone? Kind of reluctant to communicate with you through the cell phones because I think we'll get a loud feedback. Can you send me a message maybe? Yeah, okay. Okay, I'm thinking of GoToMeeting. I had a seminar this morning with GoToMeeting and any, any attendee can send a text message to any other attendee. Oh, you found it. Okay. Okay, uh, let me send you a message, Alex, and uh, see if maybe I can answer your question. Uh, Alex, what are you asking? Question mark. How do I hit so? Just enter. So I don't know, you're, you're uh, Maybe it sounds like you plugged your microphone in backwards because it sounds like a record player going backwards. Chuckle, chuckle. So, I'm not sure if it's something on my end, but uh, maybe we can communicate through this uh, Zoom group chat. Um, get my. Uh, zoom panels out of the way the the center one is you know just do the same but uh, in this case make copies of both blocks the one by one by one and the one by two by three we'll launch the move command now we'll launch the copy command select objects i'll select the tall box Internet is messing up. Well, that would explain it. Um, I wonder if uh, your bandwidth is, or Wi-Fi is being taxed. You got anything else running? Uh, YouTube video with the sound muted or you know, somebody playing games in another room maybe that could be hogging internet? bandwidth i'm guessing well um alex uh, hopefully i've got this recording i should have double checked i got a button that says stop video so i believe it it is going but um hopefully watching the video later tonight will uh We'll answer your question since uh, we're having such trouble with with audio. Is your video coming out okay, Alex? Let's see if I can uh, type the answer to you. I'm not sure. I might be garbled up um, for you like you are for me. Alex, is your video working well? 
Do I sound garbled? However you spell garbled. Like you do to me. Okay, I think you lost your connection. All right, I believe Alex uh, completely got kicked off somehow. So I'll get with uh, Alex after class and hopefully the recording will keep him caught up. Uh, where was I? Hit enter to, to tell AutoCAD you're finished selecting objects. What happened? All right, let me bail out here. I think all this texting kind of broke the uh, rhythm, so to speak. Copy, select the big box, enter, grab it by one of the endpoints, put it down, place a copy on top. We got to um, place two of the cubes at the bottom, so simply click on the copy icon and select two of the cubes, hit enter. Plan ahead. I don't want to click it at one of these right side endpoints because there's nothing to O snap on, you know, to place them properly. So I'll, the planning ahead, I'm going to grab, select the two or specify the base point on a left endpoint. So I've got the copy there, I can snap them in place. Unfortunately, I can't snap them up here. Not a problem. I'll hit enter to invoke the copy command again and copy these two or uh, the same two as before. Enter. Grab it by the upper left corner and oh, snap it again. Not sure why it uh, temporarily appears behind, but I know it'll work. Now I can copy these two blocks, grab it at this point, and place it at this point. So launch copy, select both with a crossing window or individually hit enter. AutoCAD copy command says specified base point. One second. Grab it from that, that corner and oh, snap it right there. Got a student, probably Alex, coming in. Yep. Okay. Alexander's coming in on a different computer or iPad or, or cell phone. You with us again, Alex? Okay, maybe uh, Alexander hasn't fully joined us yet. Your mic is your mic, mic is turning off and on, back and forth, Alex, but I can't hear you yet. Um, I'm here. Can you can you hear me now? Yes, sir. A little bit faint, but I can hear you now. Good. Uh, let's zoom out a bit. Let's ro roll rotate the. Uh, 3D free orbit so we can see the original cube again. Now maybe what I was thinking when I uh, unify, unified, you know, six of these cubes into the bigger block was uh, just an exercise of the union command. You know, I do, yeah, here we go. Step five, union the stacked boxes into a single solid. I'll, I'll do what, what step five says, but let me undo it. And union cubes into these one by two by three boxes. Coming up five o'clock here. The union icon is, the upper left icon in the solid editing panel. 
on the 3D modeling, uh, what's it called, workspace, again. Or you can type the word union. So tap on the two uh, full moons crashing together. And we will select actually I cannot select all six at the same time because um, well I let me try I think I can f catch I can reach through these um, conceptually shade uh, shaded blocks and uh, grab hold of the the uh, blocks behind them with the midpoint object snap. So let's try it. Go to uh, click the solid union. You can certainly select these top three. Now the bottom three are going to be a little difficult. Got that one. Yeah, I stand corrected. Not a problem. Let me bail out. I'm going to move. Actually, let's let's change to a different visual style. Hey, here we go. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> okay. X-ray is, is handy for exactly what we want to do right now. Or we could simply go back to uh, 2D wireframe, and then we got a clear shot. Uh, okay, the bottom ones. I think we'd have to. You know, we can we can we can rest our cursor on one of these little wires. And um, let's try wireframe, and then maybe go to X-ray union. We'll select one. Two, three, and then the three directly above. Enter. Let's go return to the conceptual visual style. And I'll temporarily pull this block out to show that we did, in fact, weld the six blocks into a single one by two by three box. Undo. We also unioned these six together. Same deal. This can be done from the uh, conceptual hello. Why did that happen? Not a problem. We'll enter. There. So now we've 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 welded um, boxes into two of these one by two by three. You know, we we welded six twelve cubes into two one by two by three boxes. The other way, um, let me undo, 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 rather than trying to reach through. Uh, let's try the same thing with X-ray. And I will try to weld uh, six in the middle of this assembly by reaching through and see how well it goes. Union, enter. I want to weld that one. That one. This is harder than I thought. All right, let's go back to 
2D wireframe, maybe uh, uh, tweak the view a, a little bit more so there's we don't get those six-legged spiders so many so much. Union two three. I already selected that one. It looks like I stepped out of the boat a little further than I should have. All right, we'll move. See, we want to get that cube. Let's I'm gonna move this stair step, say two units directly to the to the right. And later I'll move them back. Why'd that guy get nudged? Always something, ain't it? Move, select, enter, put him back where he was. I believe I got a clear shot at the six now. <laughs> okay. yeah, it looks like I carelessly unioned these four together. Too bad we're uh, not a problem. Let's erase those four. Change the uh, conceptual. I'll copy. <laughs> well, always something, ain't it? We'll select these four. There. Now, where was I? Union. Those three. And these three there. I'm going to move this uh, set of stairs two units back again. Hope I got them all. Or I can just oh snap them back where they were. I won't take time to make this other assembly here, which I think, uh, like the second one, it does lend itself to you know, making copies of the cubes as well as the boxes. Let's, let's do the snaky thing, and then I'll give you a break. The snaky thing that's uh, most, that's got a couple of cubes at the far right end. The rest has got the one by two by three boxes. Now again, don't feel you gotta duplicate the handout. You know, you can't go wrong if you duplicate it. I'll place, place one block there, and with the rotate command, it, it's the same as what we did in introductory class, except that you're working at a 3D angle. Click 
click on the rotate command, select the object you want to rotate, hit enter, specify a point on the XY plane. And I'm tempted to say it can be a point anywhere, but uh, stay, staying on the plane would probably be a little more logical. We'll rotate them some odd angle. Copy this guy. And rotate the fresh copy. Yeah, it kind of looks like I just you know, leisurely snapped into the quarter um, uh, 45 degree angle. We'll bring another copy down. Rotate them a little bit more, like to, to match the handout. Being incredibly lazy, I'm going to copy these two assembly and then rotate these two assembly rats. Yeah, I should have mirrored them. Not a problem. I'll move that corner to there and then rotate. Here I'm picking a, the, uh, a point that is not on the XY plane. Again, looks can be deceiving, so uh, take time to double check. Nothing's you know lost in space, so to speak. And I'll do a couple of the uh, Annas joining us. Hello, Anna. You missed uh, using the box command to make the one by one by one cube on page one or two dash one and the one by two by three box. And the, the key to, to making boxes is um, make sure your cursor is specified, is pointed in the X direction before you answer the questions. I'll click uh, length, being careful that the cursor is in the perfectly in the X direction. I'll type one, enter. Now it says width. Two enter now it says height three enter and that makes the um, edges of the box line up with XYZ axes. Anybody got any questions so far with the box command? We use 3D free orbit to uh, rotate the gerbil ball around. I don't see the uh, the cube in the in the handout, but uh, be be aware of it. In fact, there's um, yeah, I'm stepping out of the boat. I thought there was so, some place. There's a list of uh, you know the uh, the the standard views: front, front, back, right, left, southwest, isometric. Stepping out of the boat again. <coughs> we'll have to punt on that, but sooner or later we'll come across a uh, drop down list. It's the same as same as clicking on the sides and the corners of the cube, but you know, when you click on a word instead of a graphic. Uh, we also did the union command to, to, to weld 
cubes into the one by two by three box. You can also use the go back to the home. All right, Bergner. Solid. Yeah, home tab. We can weld um, all what is this four, eight, eight of these solids into a single object. Use the gerbil wheel to get the warm and fuzzy. Change the vi the visual style to X-ray, so we can see it is in fact a single object. Now, unfortunately, unless there's been some changes recently, I, I don't believe you can, uh, you know, after saving this drawing and going and getting a beer and coming back and opening it up, in general, you can't um, revert your solids back into the parts that it was made before you, you know, the, the, to the status it was before you union. Uh, some CAD systems, you might be able to do that. You know, they got a little bit of a memory on how they formed, how they went together, but I don't believe even modern AutoCAD has that. Let's see, we're going to look for the properties. Starting to think someplace I did see the word uh, history or memory. Like perhaps what I just told is not accurate. So anyway, any questions on page 2-1? So I can get back where we were. Again, we covered the, uh, we learned a new workspace. We learned the box command. The gerbil wheel is a 3D F orbit or free orbit. We used object snaps to make copies and we unioned the cubes to form the one by two by three box and, and uh, lots of cubes and boxes into a single solid object. By the way, on these handouts, after the word, after the command here in the upper right, I give you the last few uh, few words or, or characters of the tinyurl.com slash YouTube video link. So if you go to the tiny, you know, open up your um, list of YouTube tutorials, if you, you know, to, to remember to, Start with tinyurl.com slash and copy paste or type the, the last part of that tiny URL, Bergner Box One or Bergner Extrude. And uh, within that video, I, I uh, talk about visual style. I don't think I have a, a YouTube tutorial that is that covers visual style alone. So it's kind of built into the extrude tutorial. Okay, take a 10 minute break. Let's see. I covered up the clock on my computer. Always something. I got 518 right now. Let's reconvene at say 530. And we'll go to page 2-2. Uh, so see you back at 530, folks. Take a pick of the attendance. There ought to be a way of uh, digitally recording the attendance. I 
might be a question to ask the other instructors is how can I hit a button and form a text file of, of the exact time and the list of attendees. Well, we're waiting for good measure. We did have some, uh, you know, I appreciate you all have different uh, workloads and come and go at different times. But uh, um, again, let me know if you did not receive the, the uh, was it four or five files I emailed a few hours ago. I've been unable to, uh, transfer the DWG files to students anywhere within the Google Classroom. You can down, you can um, view the PDF files. And I think with a little bit of extra clicking, you can view the Word documents and maybe Excel files. But uh, once you can view one of the files in the Google Classroom, then it's, I believe you can download it. Well, you got to add some software to view a DWG file. And I don't think uh, I want you to be installing software. It uh, might, you know, has risk of altering other settings in your computer, possibly violating the virus checker in your company computer. Also, I've got, uh, I don't think, I don't think I'll offend anybody. Let me open up my um, uh, that, that, that attendance file. I'm guessing everybody that's attending right now has turned in exercise 90. And I've got file, Anna, I haven't received one from you yet, have I? You still with us, Anna? Might have stepped out. Uh, let's see, I got one from Alexander, Ali, Curtis, Damien, Daniel, and Sally. Some of these that I have not received from have not joined us today. Catharia, um, did you send in your week one assignment? I'll send an email after class uh, reminding you, you know, just send me, send me anything.
Okay, I got 530. I just noticed my, um, come on, Bergner. Um, Google Classroom doesn't have the uh, pages of the textbook for tonight's homework assignments. I hope I emailed them all to you. We'll uh, get back to this in a, you know, after another page or two of the uh, in the handouts. I'd like you to, you know, we time permitting, we'll do at least one of the homework. And I'd like to assign you some homework um, without helping you at all in class, if I may. Interesting. He's got a stray dimension there. I should have frozen. And here I've. Uh, I got uh, I printed out the blue is the 3D solid layer. I should have frozen the 3D solid layer so that the green, uh, or, no, I'm sorry, 3D object layer. So it's, it should have frozen it so the green object layer printed out. Always something. Now this 31 has a hole right here in this hose clamp looking thing. But, um, we haven't learned the, well, now that I think of it, you know, I think in another week we can draw a cylinder that's not a vertical cylinder. You know, once we learn the align command or the 3D rotate command, Uh, let's see, where are we? Getting back to the handout pages. Are we all back from break? Okay, looks like Alex is coming back in on an iPhone. Everybody's back from break. Let's look at um, handout page 2 2 now. I'm not sure if this was a good idea, but I thought we'd, you know, taken baby steps instead of, you know, working with a full machine part. We just make polyline objects a triangle, a pentagon, and a hexagon using the AutoCAD polygon command we used in introductory class. Um, before we make the polygons, let's, let's make layers for each of these three shapes, say a triangle in color magenta, hexagon in uh, cyan, and a pentagon in a hidden line in green. It should be review from introductory class. We uh, reviewed last week, keeping the same drawing file. Let's open up the layer properties, add a few layers and name one, say triangles. I think that's spelled right. Uh, come on, Bergner. That would be magenta in continuous line type. We want another layer for, say, pentagons. And that would be green 
but not in continuous to follow the handout. You know, you really didn't specify, but you never go wrong if you match your instructor's handout, you know. So I'll load the hidden line type and assign it to the Pentagon's layer. And it appears to be a little bit uh, heavier line weight, so I'll fatten up the Pentagon's layer line weight to say uh, you know, 40, uh, 0.4 millimeter maybe. I might have maybe 0.5, can't remember what I did. We'll fatten it something. And the last layer would be hexagons. And that would be a color cyan. And also a hair heavier line weight. We'll make him 0.4 millimeter. And Looks like all three of the circles were made in yet another layer with hidden line and cyan. I'm going to pretend I didn't see that. Let's just uh, set layer zero back to color number seven. It's the only color that changes from black or white depending on what your background is. So with uh, Layer zero current, um, got my three layers built. I'll close layer property manager and on the, uh, we'll go back to the uh, top view. Okay, I think because of this perspective, we're Ah, uh, rats. Notice how um, you kind of get a vanishing point perspective. And I do recall coming across that before. There we go. If we go to the wireframe, we get back to a, a simple straight down perspective without the vanishing point. I thought, can't remember how, I thought there was other ways of toggling that off and on. Anyway, let's um, make three circles that are two units in diameter. Do we have the circle command anywhere? Yep, there it is. Two circle, uh, two unit radius. So on the draw palette of the home tab of the uh, solid modifying whatever uh, workspace. We'll click center radius and specify a two unit radius and we'll copy it twice. Toggling over to the triangle layer, we'll draw a uh, triangle polygon that's circum cir inscribed about the two unit radius circle. Double check, did I do that right? Yep, radius of two. Okay. Close properties, though if I had a big enough screen, I'd leave it open all the time. Save your file. Let's see, where should we save it? I got a folder of student work, week two, put it into the Paul folder. And I'll name it Paul WK2. Now what? Not sure why it closed, got it open. Okay, I'm clicking the wrong X, that's why. Duh. There. Okay, we're on, we got the uh, 
triangle layer current now. So we'll draw a magenta uh, triangle inscribed about this circle. Again, we covered this in um, introductory class. There's the polygon icon. Click on polygon. We want to make a three-sided object for the triangle. Specify the center of the polygon right there. We want it to be inscribed. Now the hard part. Do we O snap on a quad on the top quadrant or the three o'clock quadrant or the bottom quadrant? Looks like the handout will orient the triangle properly if we O snap at the top quadrant. I think it's safer if we extrude these one at a time uh, for two reasons. If you extrude something on a whose object is on a different layer, the, the colors kind of how to put this. You know, if we, if we put the cyan hexagon here and extruded it at the same time we extruded the uh, triangle, one or the other would have a, the, the solid object would be the layer of the current, I'm sorry, the color of the current layer. Well, we're drawing these polygons on the three separate layers, so we want not only the initial polygon to be on the polygon, the proper layer, but we want the solid extrusion of it to be on the proper layer. And I, I don't know that they've got it fixed, but I fear if, if, if I draw the three shapes and then extrude them all together, only one of them will have, the, uh, have everything perfectly on the proper layer. The other two will have the original shape on the, the original layer but the solid, the rest of the solid would be on whatever the current layer is. Anyway, so let's extrude these as we create them. The extrude command is right next to the box icon. Extrude icon next to the box icon. We can do it looking straight down. Might be a little more Okay, I'm in 3D orbit, not 3D free orbit, so I don't get the gerbil wheel, but it's aside from the gerbil wheel and the circles at top, bottom, right, left, it's, it's about the same. So, so we can extrude while viewing from a 3D perspective, and we uh, can see our results a little faster this way. Click on the extrude icon while we're still in the triangle layer. Select the triangle, hit enter. And how far do we extrude these up? Interesting. Do I not say how much to extrude them? I'm pretty sure it's the same as the radius, too. But I do not see the extrusion amount on the handout. Let's uh, let's say two. It's in step four. You're right. Thank you. Okay, I guess we're kind of deviating from the instructions a bit and going from two to four, and then two to four. And, you know, anyway, we're going two to four instead of anyway. Let's uh, call it two. I think I just did it three, didn't I? Extrude, select, enter, two, there. Toggle over to the um, hexagon layer. We'll launch the polygon command again. AutoCAD command prompt saying how many sides. I'll say six, enter. Specify the center. I'll 
slide over the circumference of hair so that the center is easily found. We want it inscribed. And let's pick a quadrant to match the handout. We'll extrude this guy too high. And similarly go to the pentagons. Place a polygon that has five enter sides. Hover around the circumference, O snap in the center. Specify inscribed. And we shall extrude Pentagon two and two units. Go back to home, double check. Things are match matching the handout with the exception of the layer that was current when we made the initial circles. Step three says use 3D free orbit to get a rough southwest view. And that would be uh, this view right here. But to, man, to follow the handout, let's use the uh, 3D free orbit gerbil ball method and roll them around. And again, it's wise to avoid all these vertices perfectly overlapping because then you got the six legged spider type display and a little bit a little bit awkward I'm getting lost in space let me go home top there that's approximately a southwest isometric Oh, what was the height for the Pentagon? All three are extruded two units straight up. That reminds me, does the extrude command depend which direction you're... Um, your cursor is aimed? Like if your cursor is pointed in the Z direction, I believe it'll extrude in the Z direction. Or did it? Oh, I stand corrected. It, I typed two and it went two in the, in the positive Z direction, regardless of where my, uh, whether my cursor was pointed in the positive or the negative Z direction. Let's exercise the visual styles to get the warm and fuzzy. Let's see, I think it's called, yeah, hidden, conceptual, x-ray. Conceptual, hidden, x-ray. I think that when I made the handout, I think I had them all just simply set, uh, set in a 2D wireframe. So let's copy these guys and stack them up uh, and use the align command to put uh, flat side against flat side. 
Now again, don't sweat the load like you gotta copy the handout perfectly. I just want you to, to learn how to, you know, stack the blocks, you know, so a, a spe specific face coincides with a specific face. Let me make some copies of these. Copy, I'll select all three of them. And I'll place copies all over the place. Uh, let's say, say we want to put, let me demonstrate to you the align command now. You know how to snap them together like we did the cubes, just grab them by the endpoint and snap them to an endpoint. But you don't know how to, unless it's coincidentally, like maybe, uh, maybe not. I don't know that you can snap any of these shapes. Yeah, the six-sided shape you can, you can uh, put face to face. Anyway, starting to babble again. Let's uh, use the align command. And that is, there's, there's two align commands. Here's the 3D align. I prefer the old fashioned 2D, or yeah, the old 2D align command because it also works in 3D. The difference between the two is how you specify the hooks of the bungee cords. What we're going to do is connect bungee cords from the object being aligned to the other object. And you know, I, when I'm bungee cord in a box on the roof of the car, I like to hook, hook one bungee cord to the box and then to the luggage rack and then walk around to the second corner and hook to the corner and to the luggage. You know, I like to go bungee cord by bungee cord, but the uh, 3D method, in new 3D align, you specify uh, hook, hook, hook on the object being aligned. And then the second hook, second hook, second hook on the stationary object. So let me demonstrate them both. You decide which is more intuitive to you, the old align or the new 3D align. With the old align, select object. I want to put this square, this shape against, say, this back surface here. So two corners will touch, and then the other two will overhang or be a little short. Anyway, it's asking, what do I want to align? Pick just what you want to move and rotate, not both of them. You know, it kind of makes sense, hey, I want to align this with that, and so shouldn't I select both of them? No, just the one you want to move and rotate. And by the way, you can scale it. As a, as a final step of the procedure, but we, we won't, we'll leave it exact size it is rather than scaling it to, you know, the, anyway, enter. I want to place my first bungee cord hook on this box and the, the first destination point I'm going to hook on the cargo carrier. This first bungee cord is infinitely strong. This is going to when 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 I finally let go of the of the object being aligned, this bungee cord will shrink down to zero. The second one is a little bit weaker. The third one's a little weaker. But the first one is infinitely strong. It'll stretch, it'll compress down to zero length. Line command saying specify the second source point. That's the hook on the align object. Now it says second point on the destination uh, object. So it'll be right there. Now we're working with the third bungee cord. Remember, that's the weakest of the three. I'll snap here and snap there. And boop, 
because the dimensions of the pentagon are slightly different than the dimensions of the hexagon, the sides do not perfectly uh, match. I think I missed one of the options. Let me hit F2, hit escape to get out of 3D orbit. Somehow I missed the opportunity to invoke the uh, align procedure. I'll, I'll look more closely when I do it the next time. Say I want to align uh, this rectangular object on, say, this rectangular face. And these two points to coincide. Launch. I'll, I'll uh, let me continue with the old uh, align command. I'll select this guy. Enter. First one's infinitely strong, so we go there to there. Second one there to there, and third one there to there. Interesting. I don't see the. Maybe the uh, align option only comes up when you're specifying uh, two points for two-dimensional work. Do you mean scale or do you mean align? Uh, I mean align. Okay. Let me demonstrate uh, 2D work. Polyline, C for close, and C for close. Now this, um, Dan, I remember in introductory we talked about this. Uh, one of my intermediate topics I like that students didn't see much value in it was the imagery. And if these are two pieces of a map, and say this line right here is, is identical on both images, and this map has got north in a different direction than this, and they're drawn at different scales, I could align the ends of this road to match the ends of this road, because they are in fact the same road, just on different maps with a different north direction and a different scale. So with a line, I'll select this guy, enter, a line from there to there and there to there. I want you to make a liar out of me. I believe once after I click here, um, scale, gosh, I'm getting old here. Too much uh, chemical experiments in the 70s, I'm afraid. Let me click this uh, point here, and I believe there'll be an option. You know, do you want to scale the aligning object to match so that the road is the exact length of the stationary object? Enter. There we go. And you're right, it says, do I want to scale the objects based on the alignment points? Yes, I do. And there you see if, you know, if, the, if this street is common on both scan maps, I can, uh, you know, continue the, continue the map from one right into the other. Surprised that we didn't come across that in the in the uh, you know when we specify a third source point and destination point. Let let me show you the new three D 
a line or line 3D command. Where should I put him? Make another copy of the triangle here and move him closer. And how about I'll make this edge of the um, triangle precisely match this edge of the hexagon. And then these corners will flop straight, straight across the hexagon. So it'll end up, you know, don't follow me here, but I'll want it to end up, it'll kind of look something funky like this. And I realize this is making absolutely no sense in 3D. And here's a stretch command. And I want it to align kind of sort of like this. So the point is pointing straight up into the air and the this edge of the triangle lay, uh, it lays precisely on this edge of the hexagon. And I got it drawn like they're the exact same length, but it would be extremely coincident. I don't believe they are. Let me erase my garbage. We'll launch the 3D align command. I want I want to align that object, hit enter. Now this will be my number one, the, the, the first hook of bungee cord one, the first hook of bungee cord two, and the first bungee cord, hook of bungee cord three. And I want the first bungee cord, second hook to go here, second bungee cord, second hook to go here, and third, and it doesn't look like it's working, third bungee cord, second hook to go there. And I believe it did. Let's do the, do a conceptual, yep. We'll do a 3D free orbit. Align the triangle. And my, my mathematically, apparently, the hypotenuse of the triangle is the same as the width of the uh, hexagon. Try to remember that for next time. How about we copy this pentagon and we'll make a copy of it on top of itself, but this surface here will lay flat right there. So the pentagon will you know, go upward. We'll copy the pentagon again. Which one do you want me to use? The 3D, 3D align or the old align? I was even confusing myself when I did 3D align. So let me go back to the old fashioned, you know, bungee cord one, first, second, bungee cord two, first, second. We'll click the old align, hit enter, uh, or select the new Pentagon, hit enter. Like that. I'm making the bungee cord here. I want it to, to stretch from that point to this point. 
Now making the second bungee cord, I want it, I want it to, to stretch from here to there. Now this, either one of these bottom two, if the wind's blowing there, I can oh snap, even though I can't see it, I can oh snap at that um, bottom corner of the Pentagon. Let me stay with this one. I'll, I can place it anywhere on the top is as good as another, even that midpoint. Remember, the first bungee cord is infinitely strong. Second is weak. Third is weaker. There we go with the uh, aligned pentagon on top of the first pentagon. And again, I don't believe I saw that. Do you want to scale objects? That's okay. You can scale it right now. Just grab it and scale it down. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Actually, that's, that's, you brought up a good point, Dan. Perhaps. You know, as a second procedure, I can't think of an example to, to dep, you know, replicate it right now, but you're right. I could scale the object from this base point using the reference option so that this length of the top one equals this length of the bottom one. In fact, let me use a, a midpoint. Scale, select it, enter, base point. Reference option. I want the distance from this point to that point to be half of what it is. So there I use the uh, scale reference option to resize that top pentagon to you know to be to yeah i think that covers everything of page two dash two we used a you know again exercise the uh, visual styles hidden conceptual and x-ray again, but you know, just, I think just uh, stacking the blocks up again, don't feel you have to copy the handout, but I guess the most I can ask is uh, plan to do something and ensure that what you do is what you planned. Maybe I'll make a copy of the entire assembly and match this surface with this surface. Align, select everything. There to there, there to there, and there to there. We got about 35 minutes. Want to take another break? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. I got 610. Let's reconvene at, say, 620. If um, everybody feels comfortable with stacking the triangle, pentagon, and hexagons, let's uh, move on to a real machine part right out of the textbook.
Now your starter file has the 2D, you know, the, the left side of these next two pages completely done for you. So uh, I won't ask you to, you know, to refresh yourself with introductory like, like we did last week. But for the home up, upcoming homework assignments, I, I, I would like you to, to do one or two from scratch. You know, develop the 2D view, uh, p-edit join stuff into closed polygons and, and use today's material to extrude the closed polygons. All right, let's uh, reconvene at say 620 then. Go get some ice water. Anybody got any questions during break? Okay. See you in nine and a half. Still got five minutes. Anybody got any question? With Zoom, I'm not able to, I, with a little work, 
you can share your monitor, but I, I don't believe Zoom uh, allows me to take control of your computer. And it's one thing I miss about the, you know, the reality classrooms where I can take control of your mouse and show you how to do it and then undo it back where it was and have you repeat it. Go to meeting allows that. It's, it's kind of you know, multiple steps. And sometimes not worth the, the time to do all the steps to, to do it. With Zoom, I think, um, you know, if you wanted me to help you with your specific drawing, the only way I can think of is if you emailed it to me, I'd set an undo mark. No, you emailed it to me, I'd show you, show you how to do it, and then you'd have the original copy that you could follow me while I do it on, on my copy of yours or do it by yourself later. So uh, I guess the only delay is how long it takes to email a file from one end of Hampton Roads to, to my house. What are we going to do next week? Still got a few minutes. Open up the week three file. Hopefully I'll do a better job practicing uh, you know, less time before class. Okay, next week, uh, I guess I'll make you a starter file, but we'll, uh, we'll do the 3D align and 3D rotate to snap together uh, machine parts instead of boxes and uh, polygons and just snap the machine parts, much like I snapped the uh, polygons. You know, not, not a great deal more than we, we learned already. I also want you to learn object snap tracking. I'll give you a starter file with, with all these green objects. And your mission is to, oh, snap a line from quadrant up uh, across enough so it's just over the quadrant, then come straight down to the quadrant. And uh, for some reason, uh, a year ago when I taught this class, I made a note that, hey, I really should put this object snap tracking back into intermediate because it comes in handy. But I can't remember, <laughs> can't remember why it comes in handy with 3D work. So we'll take just five minutes or so to demonstrate object snap tracking, and uh, I'd suggest leave it turned on for future 3D work, and I think we'll find a, find a use for it now and then. We'll see. Let's see. Uh, I got 620. Let me open. I got the uh, rest of week number three in a different file.
Okay, also next week, we'll start working with lumber objects. And we'll make a box the same dimension as a two by four. Make a copy of it straight up. Uh, make a copy of it in a line and then union it together to make a longer two by four. And then use the align command that we just covered today to align a leg to the top board of a sawhorse. So it's a little more exercise of what we're learning tonight. Then we'll get into the slice command. And we can play with uh, Luke Skywalker's lightsaber and say, hey, I want to, I want to. Uh, spin the lightsaber to disintegrate everything along this plane. These three points form a plane. And the lightsaber will just cut everything off. So we can end up with a, uh, a uh, let's see if I can, uh, we can end up with a crude made in the field sawhorse. The next page of week three, maybe I'll assign for homework, but uh, you know, here's a couple other designs for sawhorses with uh, no more than what we know at this point. This little child sandbox out of two by sixes is kind of fun and simple to make. Just, you know, lay the boards at a 45 degree angle over and slice the ends off and mirror, copy them to other corners. This is a cat tree that, you know, it's a long story. My father-in-law was thinking of building one, so I kind of modeled the, the one my son brought home somewhere. Here's a mailbox, here's a toy box. Uh, let's see, yep, that's all for, for week three. So we, it sounds like over the weekend I need to find or build you another starter file to, to uh, get her done. Uh, let's see, where are we? Oh, yes. Um, Open up the uh, starter, I think I called it WK2 starter, a starter file to begin uh, our classwork on page 2-3 and 2-4. So uh, again, I don't know how to download a DWG from the class page for the Google Classroom without the complexity of adding a mysterious software that may cause trouble downstream. So uh, hopefully y'all save the um, drawing that I emailed you. I believe this that was early this morning, wasn't it? And I believe the current version is V4. You got an older one, it may not have all six parts. Mm -hmm. All right, we got about 20 minutes before, uh, before I got to let you go. How about we'll do an easy one and a hard one. And then of those uh, six that we've got for homework, I'll ask you to do an easy one and a hard one of those. Does that sound like a plan? Roger that. How's that? You concur, Dan? 
I concur. Yes, sir. Okay. This guy looks, I think, is the easiest one of the bunch. I hope this is a 2D app. It'd be just my luck to carelessly bring in a 3D solid. Nope. No, this is a 2D um, polygon. It's a, it's a closed polygon. I've already done the p-edit join. Should I demonstrate that again? Yeah, let me demonstrate that again. Um, to dummy down a, an AutoCAD object, use the explode command. And that is right there. The explode command will uh, simplify a complicated form of life into a simple form of life. And on rare occasions, you might have to explode something three times if it's a complicated object made of a couple complicated objects that are each made of a couple complicated objects. So anyway, a, this closed polyline will explode simply down into a bunch of lines, arcs, and circles, or lines and arcs. Can we use explode if um, you have unioned a bunch of solids together? Can you explode them back off to the original? Negative. There's, okay. uh, I have seen the word history yeah, okay. recently, it's as if there's a way you can record how something is assembled, like there's an extra step before you union it, maybe. Um, but in general, if you explode a 3D solid, it'll, it'll uh, simplify into a bunch of surfaces, oh, that's which well. are really, oh. really ugly to clean up and deal with. Yep. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Not a problem. So we got a closed polyline here. Let's explode it down into a simpler form of life. Now we got a line arc, an arc, another arc. We got a, looks like four lines and three arcs. Now if we were to extrude these lines and arcs, it would end up being a kind of like a cattle fence looking thing. Let me go ahead and do that since I already mentioned it to you. Extrude, select it all. I'll, uh, forgetting how the dimensions of this are, although I think it says on the handout how far to extrude it, doesn't it? Anyway, I'm just going to pick a random distance. There's the extrusion. Well, at first glance, you think, well, gee, maybe that maybe that was successful. What happened to my uh, 3D? viewing icons. I just lost my uh, visual cube and my ribbon of icons. Not a problem. 3DF, 3DFO, and you'll see da, 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 cattle fence. You know, what good is that? Well, it is possible if you're making Shrek, there's a, there's a, I, I, don't, I can't get excited about surfaces, but it's possible you can grab this like chicken wire and pull it out and then smooth it. So you can make kind of more Shrek looking organic shapes, but you can't calculate the mass of it and the, um, you know, all the engineering properties of an I-beam, uh, you know, that's, that's where the beauty of a solid object comes in. Anyway, to clean it up, I'll do a 3D three orbit, look at it straight down the, the uh, 3D FO enter. I'll erase all except the bottom. And uh, it does get kind of messy. It'd be a lot easier just to undo. Why did it find nothing? Oh, I, oh I'm sorry. I got to explode these surfaces now. Now this is a surface. I got to explode it into separate lines. So we'll explode all these surfaces into separate lines. 
And now I can erase the uh, all the garbage except what's on the XY plane and start over again. Since I lost my uh, graphic tools, I'll just type the word plan, P-L-A-N, enter. It says, well, which USS, UCS do you want to um, get a plan view of straight down? Current is in fact the world or, uh, coordinate system. But for good measure, I'll type W enter for the old latitude, longitude we've always been worked with. Now, if the wind's blowing right, I believe we got uh, four lines and three arcs again. Let me do a list, LI, select everything, and da 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 why are there 13? LI. Okay, it looks like everything is doubled on itself. Everything I erase, I E to erase, you know, that's, that's two objects. Yeah, everything is a double object. So I stepped out of the boat and sank again. Not a problem, I'll, I'll erase the top of each of the double objects. And I believe we got one, two, three, four, five, six objects now. E, yep, six objects. So I'll use the p-edit command to weld them back together. Again, from introductory, there is a join command but it's so, so specific in use. I think you're ahead if you learn the multi multitask tool of edit polyline. We'll click edit polyline or type PE enter, select any one of them, so hit enter for yes, I wanna convert that object into a polyline and we'll invoke the join option of the P edit command. Window everything. Enter. Now use the close option to complete it into a closed continuous polyline. And we'll hit enter to get out. Now we're back where we began. Handout here says extrude to five. Are we in the proper layer? Yep, object. We'll extrude, select, enter, five, enter, da, 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 3D, F, O, enter. There's our 3D solid object. Well, how do I know it's not the uh, wireframe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, or a surface. Okay, we'll click conceptual. We'll click X ray. Yep, that is a solid multi sided object. Realistic. Some of these are almost identical to others. Like, for example, the the difference between 2D wireframe and wireframe, I think it's just the background and the way the UCS icon looks. There's wireframe. You got the, the three colored UCS icon, the black background. Here's 2D wireframe, white with a black XYZ UCS icon. So what good are the, why well, have both of them? Anyway, let's do another one. Let's see this, say this 24. That's, this is going to have, we're going to have to extrude this pipe clamp here and this piece of angle iron to one amount and, and extrude this open area here by a different amount. Let me, if I can go back to uh, the handout. Why does it keep jumping around so much?
Okay, extrude the center section to 15. And the, the uh, angle iron slice and the pipe clamp to 30. Well, how do we make a closed polyline of this center object? Not a problem. Let's just copy the whole thing over, and that'll give us a clear shot at the two fat objects and the center object. Might as well uh, erase out of, out of here because they're of no use. And I'll trim away so that just this flat plate here in the middle it remains. Launch the trim command. I want to trim all this stuff, hit enter. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I selected everything as a cutting edge. Now it wants now it wants to select the objects to disintegrate. So I'll just keep blasting away. That's all we need. Everything else is to be erased. So what I say 15 for this and 30 for this and this, right? First we gotta weld them all into the same polyline. This might be done with a shortcut with the p-edit multiple option. I've stepped out of the boat several times and, and it sunk, so let me uh, play it safe. And do the tried and true. Edit polyline, select, yes. Join, select, enter, enter there. We got that guy welded into a closed polyline. Repeat the process again. Select some, yes. Join, select everything, and it's uh, it's already uh, open as an option. We'll hit that escape the bailout. And we're finished. Enter again. Select yes. I want to convert it to one. Join option. Select everything. Open as an option. We'll hit escape. And yep, now so we got two, got all three things ready. We'll extrude this guy. What I say, fifteen. These two things will extrude to, a, to 30, but I'm a reluctant to extrude them at the same time because I think they're going to... Should I step out of the boat? What the hell? Let's extrude them both at the same time, and I'm afraid they're going to be one solid object with a bunch of open space in the middle of it instead of two solid objects. It's been so long since I did this. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it will be two. Go extrude, select them both, enter, hit 30, enter, and let's see if they're one object or two. Good. They remain separate objects. So I stand corrected. It wasn't as tricky as I thought. We'll move the plate back where it belongs, grabbing it by the proper endpoint. We'll union the thing. And by the way, you can change color, change the layer. Or this You were starting, it's not such a sin anymore to deviate by, to buy layer when you get into 3D work. And you know, all three of these things could be on the object layer, but one could be blue, you know, yellow, and purple, you know. It's, not quite such a big a sin in 3D work to assign color specifically instead of by layer. But anyway, we unioned all three of them together. Let's change the uh, visual style to get the warm and fuzzy. 3D FO enter because I can't remember. Oh, there, there my uh, tools came back again. Interesting. There's our 3D solid object. I can't remember if this curriculum has a has a way we can uh, click on it and it tells how many cubic units of material it is. I think you can. I can't remember offhand. Any question about so far? We did the simple one, just 
you know, one piece welded together with P at it and join. This one was a little harder. We had to make a copy to isolate the center section here, extrude the three pieces to the two different uh, amounts in your uh, page, what was it, two dash three or four. Where are we? we? Got four minutes. Let me open up the. Uh, now let me open up the AutoCAD instead of the PDF of the uh, six potential homework problems. I think I got all six of them on a layout. Yeah, I believe I emailed you a PDF of this layout. On the PDF, you don't see these rectangles here. Those are viewports we'll cover in a couple of weeks. But um, you know, which two do you want to want to hand in? Pick a pick a easy one and a hard one. How about one from each of the two pages? Any preference? You said an easy one and a hard one? Well, now it's, uh, I think the hard ones are on, on uh, the second page here. 30 and 31 I'd call hard. And uh, of the lower numbered one, 315 and 20, some might be easier than others, but I, I consider them all easier than those 30 and 31s. Which one on, uh, out of three, I'm sorry, out of seven, 15, and 20, which one should I assign? Um, I'll just go with 15 then. 15 it is. Any, any uh, objections? No. Okay, your PDF has got the, uh, Everything you need if you don't already have the textbook. I like to think I dimension better than the textbook, but and check the errata sheet. None of these have an asterisk next to them, so I don't believe there's any typos, but I might have overlooked. So uh, you know, do the do the 2D work using the dimensions here. Don't bother with the center lines because they've got nothing to do with the solid model. And once you finish the 2D, P edit, join it together. Oh, I think there is a typo. Yeah, there's something about the way this arc here merges with this. Let me open up the typo. I should have put an asterisk next to it. Okay, this might cause confusion because it doesn't know whether to open up an XLS file with Microsoft or Open Office. Hate it when this happens. There we go.
Okay. Well, typo says ignore the eight vertical dimension. Let me grab my textbook. Sorry to keep you over time here. Would it be easier to just do 20? Uh, well, that's fine with me, but I hate, you know, changing paddles in the middle of the river here. What was that error again? Yeah, a motorboat up to this canoe. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore the eight vertical dimension. Well, I've got the book open and I don't see a eight vertical dimension. Ah, I see. Okay. Your, uh, the textbook measures from this point here to there and says it's eight units when in fact it's really eight point one two three four five six seven eight trying to dimension with yeah it's really eight point your book rounded it to eight units when it's really not perfectly eight units. So I believe if you disregard that, the textbook says that that is eight units and simply use the fillet command between this line and this circle, it's, it's no problem, no confusion to do. By the way, I think 20 has a little comp complexity here. Does that have an error in it? Nope. Well, let's uh, let's stick with uh, problem number fifteen, if nobody objects. All right, let's fifteen. And what's the other one? We haven't picked the, the second one yet. Uh, which one of uh, page? Um, well, I got a two dot two dash two. But that's right. I don't. I, I don't think I gave you this. Uh, Anyway, which uh, for the second one to do, you want to do number 30 or 31? Let's shoot for 31. No. Let's try it. I agree. Yeah. 30, well, that keyway is a little tricky. I can't remember if we had an assignment that had one of those keyways in introductory or not. All oh, right, let's we did. We definitely did. That was a headache. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yes, I remember. 15 and 31, don't bother with the hidden line for this circle or for this hole that goes through the hose clamp. And don't spend your time on the center lines because neither the, the red center lines nor the hidden lines have anything to do with building, extruding in every, everything and uh, making this 20, 20, 20 unit extrusion. So, um, you know, just email me something with you know, something that looks like this with, uh, you know, Paul uh, space WK2.DWG, you know, your name and uh, in the file name for week two assignment, Paul WK2.DWG or Fred or Joe or Bob, whatever. Okay, and then preferably on the same sheet. I hope these are about the same size, 30 and 46. Yep. So I don't, I don't have a feel. Uh, I have a feeling they're going to, they're going to be about the same size. So just uh, develop a an isometric view of one on top of the other, and uh, put your name somewhere in week two. W D W G. Correct. First name space W K two for week number two. 
and uh, AutoCAD will automatically save it as a .dwg. And that's due on uh, Saturday midnight? Correct. Saturday at midnight. Thanks, but Paul. Actually, was it Saturday at midnight or Sunday at midnight that I've been calling them? I don't mind. <laughs> okay. Let's do it Saturday at midnight. And that'll give me a, a day to close week number two and uh, cram for week number three. Okay, check back in a, my pleasure. In a few hours, I'll uh, send an email out with the new uh, link to the recording. And I'll uh, upload the recording into the week two assignment. In addition to putting it on YouTube with a, with a link. Okay, can't think of anything else. So hey. shut down Zoom. See you next time. Have a good night. See you all. My pleasure. Thank you.